Hello guys, this is Rob with Tech. Today I'm going to do a quick uh, review of this Wang Ling 2.5 8 port managed switch. So first of all, I'm going to do an unboxing. After that, we're going to go ahead and uh, transition to my desktop where we're going to show you all the menus. Uh, also, after that, we're going to do a throughput test to see how much it uh, how much it can do on iPerf 3. So let's start. We're just going to do a quick unboxing. Very simple box. And some still information that it has on there. Um, we're gonna open this. So we have this bag, and the switch is fairly simple and kind of small. I mean, not that big. You have a ground uh, screw there, and then you got the eight ports. All of them are two point five, and you got an SFP ten gig port. Uh, this would be the model YS twenty five zero eight zero one M. Uh, quick disclaimer, I did uh, receive this uh, from Wanli for a review, but uh, they're not going to get to see this video. So uh, the review that I'm going to be giving is going to be based on uh, my opinions on it. All right. So this is the test lab. So this would be... Uh, the router uh, i don't have a physical line here so what i did is this old links is uh it just connects to my wi-fi and uh, i'm sharing the internet to the switch so right here this is the pc that we're using to test now we're gonna set up uh it already has uh what's it called proxbox i did ip pass through for uh, all these four ports so uh, one vm has these two ports and the other vm has these two ports and i'm using open media vault I'm going to show you guys how to set up a link aggregate. So here we have the switch. Um, so if you can follow the, the colors right, we got uh, this white one and this blue one. The white one is right here. The blue one is right here. Now here in the back, uh, I didn't want to use one of these ports for Proxmox. So I had in the back, I did a USB and it's has a 2.5 gig. So you can see it right here. Now this has an X because the, the cables have uh, Cat 5e, but it doesn't it, it doesn't uh, negotiate at one gig, so that's why it has an X. And that would be our internet. Now this two, this is gonna be our testing. We're gonna do the link aggregate on port one and port two. And this one goes back to the VM that we have here on East three and East two. So this would be the test lab that we're working with. Okay, so like I said, this was uh, this is running Proxmox. This is the mini PC. If you guys have any ideas on what I should do with that, let me know. I could probably test something for you guys. But uh, initially, I bought it because it's gonna be replacing my uh, virtualized PFSense. So I'm gonna put it on bare metal. Uh, I always have to restart Proxmox because of the update. So at least once a month, and uh, I end up bringing down the internet. So that's why. But first of all, here we got the OMV test one and OMV test two. Right now, I don't have anything set up on the switch. Uh, everything's cleared. Uh, so we go into hardware. We can see that I did the PCIe device. I passed in the port one, port two, and then the second one, I did the same thing. Uh, passed uh, PCIe device three and port four. Uh, so I'm going to connect into this uh, second one. Well, before I do that, we need to look into the switch. So the switch, uh, they did have some instru some. Uh, like in a manual included when well, it wasn't included they sent me a pdf manual uh but it's not that descriptive but what you do is have to go to your connection you right click properties and you have to do uh ip protocol version 4 and then you have to switch to something like this like uh you can use the same as me i wanted to 160.1.15 and then the subnet this doesn't matter the gateway or the dns this is just because since i have that uh router that i have there um, I needed this so I can connect to the internet, but basically as long as you have an IP that is not 199 here, uh, it'll work, right? So you can copy this exactly how I have it here. Um, you don't, like I said, you don't need the gateway and you don't need the DNS. After you do that, you do okay. And then you're going to be able to connect to the, uh, the switch itself. So the switch is actually on 182, actually it's a uh, 182.168.1.199. The default password is admin, uh, so it's admin admin. So right now I had already logged in, so um, that's one of my the things that I don't like about this switch. 
uh, you don't you can log out well, at least i haven't found the button to log log off like after you make changes there's no logging off um so this is the default ip address on this so you guys go 192.168.1.189 and that's how you can access it if you don't do the changes on your network you're not going to be able to hit this because it's not a dcp now to change that uh, you can just go into uh, ip settings in here you can change this to your network your subnet and your gateway i'm going to leave it like this because all the prox mocks that i set up and the vms they're set up in this network anyways what uh, i want to show you just the menus that it has here you can change the password that you have port settings you can see like all the connections that i have there uh you can see like uh this is a 2.5 gig like one and two is 2.5 gig this 100 that's the the connection to the router that i have which is uh expected and then all of this 2.5s are all the other ones connected and then another 2.5 I don't have a way of testing the 10 GB uh, with the SF uh, SFP port, so I'm not going to be testing that. Now, in here, I'm going to minimize this. Every time, I'm going to say it a couple of times, but every time you make changes, make sure you save it. Because uh, whenever you make changes, uh, the configuration gets applied to uh, memory. Uh, so you don't save it. It's never in if it restarts so you power off the device, it's gonna lose it. So make sure always go to device management, save. Always remember to save. Um, this is a, a neat feature actually, because you can make changes and let's say you cannot access it anymore or you broke something, you can just unplug it, plug it back in, and it'll just re revert to the settings that it had before before you started messing with it. So in here in configuration, we have the VLANs. Uh, we have like the static VLANs, uh, VLAN settings, we've got the QoS. I didn't test this QoS stuff or any of the like um, IGMP or loop prevention. Uh, but what I do want to test, uh, well, actually, I've already been testing it. I just want to show you how to create a lag port, uh, which you can aggregate two ports uh, in Open Media Vault. I mean, it doesn't have to be Open Media Vault, you can do like any Linux distro or uh, proxmox but i'm going to show you on open media but it's fairly easy to show you uh, so that's this menu and then security we've got the mac address search uh, monitoring this is not going to be a very in-depth of everything i just want to show you all the menu items another thing that i ran into uh, issues with is like uh, this menu was super slow um, so one of the things that you're going to see is the version uh, version 3.0 3.0.2 uh actually this is pretty good uh this version is it's not that like lag anymore like it, it, it clicks around okay um another thing that i dislike is if you ping it it doesn't affect anything but there's a 10 second delay uh, and while you're messing around in the web gui you can see here uh, 12168.1.199 it's, it's like that's the ping on that it has always like the 10 it's averaging in 10. now if i click around in the menu uh let's say i go into port settings right and then we go back you see that it has this crazy lag spikes uh ping spikes i mean um it doesn't affect performance but i mean that's not normal that, that's the only two things that i dislike there's no log off button and the way it pings when you're on the on the console uh on on the web page now this ends up timing out like once you close the browser and then reopen it it logs off automatically um so if you ping any other device uh all other devices ping at one millisecond and it doesn't matter if you're in here it's just the switch itself i did email support uh and let them know like uh was why was it pinging like that but i haven't gotten a response back uh, I did have to email them before also so I can get the new firmware version. So just something to, to keep in mind. But if we try to ping like uh, the router per se. Uh, one extra number there. You can see like here the router, uh, it pings less than one millisecond. So in, any other device is fine. And I didn't see, because uh, testing that I did, I was pinging... Uh, Google, I was pinging local devices, and then I was doing IP per, IPerf3 uh, throughput testing, and I didn't have any issues with that either. So, I mean, they were pinging fine. It's just the switch itself, the ping to the switch itself. All right, so 
the what I want to show you is how to set up a lag. Uh, I think it was very interesting uh, because in Open Media Vault, so I'm gonna log in here. First, you need two network interfaces. Go to network interfaces, and then you have this create, and you can do a bond. Now, this one's not gonna let us because you see how we only have one because the other one is being used. ENS sixteen. Before you're tempting on, ah, let me go ahead and put the bond. We got to make sure we do those changes first on the switch himself. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go into, um, start closing some stuff. You're going to do trunk group settings and I'm just going to do trunk one. Uh, you only got two trunks, trunk one, trunk two. And you can, I think, I'm not sure you can aggregate all of them or only four, but I'm just going to aggregate two ports. So trunk one, uh, here on the mode. This is when I started having a lot of issues before I got the firmware update uh, because it didn't have the AC AP and uh, after the update now this works beautifully like you, you don't have any issues connecting to it. So it's like right now I guess I can ping oh let me see the IP address it's a 183. So right now we're going to be able to ping it because we're only pinging one network interface, but we're going to enable it. So what, I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do LACP passive. And this protocol, it, what it means is that if it doesn't ask the switch to initiate the trunk, it won't initiate it. You can do active and that's going to like the switch every one second or two seconds, something like that is going to ask the device like, hey, we need to, to we need to have a, a bond. So that's what that is. But I think the the passive work fine for me. Now I'm gonna aggregate port one. So you do control on your keyboard, then click on both ports. I'm gonna add them. Now the other thing you have to do is gonna go here on the left side lap and make sure you click uh, enable apply. Now here you have the, the timeouts. I left them long and loop status. You see it's just sync up. In here, once you set up the lag on the the bond on the open media vault, you'll see that it's using a LACP. So now that we have that this ready, remember, like I said, uh, we're gonna keep those settings. Make sure we click save. So there you go. Now I'm gonna go back to lab. So you see, still link up. So we're gonna go back to open media vault, and in here, remember that we need to apply set the apply the changes. I think uh, we okay, so it's not gonna work because I enabled the LACP. So let me remove it first. Um, I think I can just disable it here. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So I disable lab. Uh, right click. Yeah, there's something to keep in mind that if you're having issues, it's because of the settings, the LC. So I'm gonna delete this because this is ENS 16 and I have ENS. 17 i'm going to delete wait the ip address we were using this 183 okay so we'll do yes but then don't save here because if you do this you're going to uh, stay without a network so i'm going to create and then i'm going to do a bond and then in here i'm going to do slave 16 and 17 now for active backup we're going to use 802.3.802.3 ad this is using that lacp protocol uh, layer two plus three, uh, then you don't have to mess with this. Now here you can do DCP if you wanted to give you an automatically give you an IP address, but I'm gonna force mine manual. So one eighty two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one eighty three was the one I had. Gateway, and then my DNS. Let's see, make sure this looks correct. Yes, it does. Now we can apply. And then you're going to know that it's going to go offline again. There. So because what happens is that now you're asking, open me about trying to create a bond, but it the switch doesn't know how to handle it because we disabled it. So to fix it, we're just going to go to the uh, web smart. Remember, we, are, we already did the trunk port. We got uh, LACP passive port one and two, and then 
you're going to go to ALCP. I'm just going to click enable, apply. Now that should start pinging already. Or after OpenBeta Vault asks for the connection bond, it'll take a little while. Right, so it already communicated and it did they perform the bond. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, now we're going to go back to ALCP and you're going to see that now we have uh, port 1, port 2 and you have an LACP status. And that's it. We have a, a lag on this. So we go to dashboard. We can see our bond is here up, up and up. Now that's for to set up the bond. And uh, now I want to show you like some throughput testing. I want to see uh, because I know a lot of people think that doing a link aggregate, you get double the bandwidth, uh, like uh, you, like in this case, 2.5 gig, and then you're going to double up. So you're going to have five gig. Plus it, you do get double the bandwidth, but you have to use two clients like um so like one client can only saturate one line and then let's say you have another client and, and then that one that one line is busy the other client will take over this uh take usage of the second line so that's how that works so in, in this testing the way that we're going to do this is um we're gonna use this omv test 2 we're gonna set up two different iperf servers uh, one is going to be in port 5000, one is going to be port uh, 5001, and they're both going to be receiving data. And then I'm going to use OMV test one, which is also using uh, the other uh, the other NIC. And that one is going to send data to OMV test. And I'll, I guess I'll put a little diagram here uh, so you can further uh, see the design here. And then I'm also going to use my desktop because it also has a 2.5 gig NIC to send data to OMV test. And you're going to see that in both devices, in both case scenarios, uh, both are sustaining the same uh, amount of speed, of link speed, uh, transfer speed, I mean, throughput speed. And then also to kind of push the, the switch more, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to set up on my desktop an iperf server uh, and then use the OMV test one and send data to my device. So there's so there's gonna be a lot of traffic to the switch. And then we can just ping the the router and see if there's any uh ping spikes, ping delays or something. So let me go uh, I'm gonna pause the video so I can set up all the putty connections. Okay so for performance testing what we have here is uh we got VM1 which is a 1.50 uh, 1.50. So this first two boxes, this this first left column, the first two, they're both acting as servers. So the one on the top is receiving, uh, expecting a connection for iperf on 5203, and the other one on port 5202. So then I'm gonna take VM2, which is this 1.183, and I'm gonna send data to the VM1. And then I'm gonna use my desktop, which also has a 2.5 gig, and I'm gonna send data from my desktop using iperf to 1.50 um so let's start like that so you're going to see that right now it's doing the 200 from vm2 to vm1 is doing 280 m uh, bytes or like 230 2349 megabits per second now i'm going to start my desktop to that same vm so my desktop to vm1 so sometimes this happens you see how this is slowing down so I stop it and then restart it. Uh, it'll end up triggering the lag connection. Okay, there it is. So now you see how uh, VM2 is sent to VM1. My desktop is sent to uh, VM1, and we're able to sustain on both connections. Two hundred. I mean, two thousand three hundred fifty-seven, uh, seventy-one, or like. I mean, it changes, but that we can sustain both now. If you look at the pings for the router, it's just so we can see if the switch is having any delays on ping, but you can see that it's been pinging at one millisecond, uh, which is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw it one more task. Uh, so we have on the this top box here in the top right, we have 1.183. This is our VM2. I did end up setting up uh, the lag connection uh, be like uh behind the scenes i i didn't put that i didn't edit it that in so i ended up sending the lag connections for uh the vm2 
So now that one's also set up as an LACP, the same way that we did the first one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a server on my desktop server listening. So it's listening on port 5400 and then I'm just going to go ahead and start it. Um, okay. So now you can see that we have, so VM one, which is this one here in two ports, we're saturating both connections, 200, um, It's better to look on this one. Yeah, we're centering the connection. So on VM1, we're doing the 21 uh, megabytes per second on both connections. Now on VM2, VM2 is the, screen, is the one sending the data. So we're sending data from VM2 to VM1, and then we're sending data from VM2 to my desktop under this connection here on the right. And you can see that we're able to sustain the 281 and the 245 megabits per second, which means that both uh, network uh, are being used but the only way that you can achieve that is if you're using two clients now this one in the middle remember it's just my desktop sending to vm1 uh, and now if we look at the pings right they're, they're all pinging in one millisecond so uh, there is no ping delays or any drop traffic uh, it's more on the um, if i ping the switch that that's where it's iffy i'm not sure why the switch doesn't ping at one millisecond but it doesn't affect any other connection now i will leave this running and i'm gonna go to whips the the configuration page the gui port statistics you can he see here if you get any bad packets or uh the rx bad packets and everything's good but yeah i guess that'll be all um I'll go ahead and leave some Amazon links to the switch. Uh, there's a couple of them, the eight port managed. There's also like a six port managed. And there's a couple. I'll go ahead and leave some couple of links in, in the description. I am an Amazon affiliate member. So if you do end up using my links, I do get a small commission. If the purchase is qualified, this doesn't affect your price, but it will help me tremendously so I can continue making these videos. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you.